Talent Link. This is Hatchet Session 3. So in order to do 3, please make sure you have done Sessions 1 and 2 with us. All right. Signposts. Remember, we've talked about the importance of being an active reader. And these are some signposts I use in my classroom as a way to get kids engaged in what they're reading. So what is the memory moment? that we have just read in our chapters. And why do you think that memory that Brian is having, that flashback, is important to the text at hand? What do you think it is going to show us either about Brian or about the story? Remember, there is a reason why the authors put memories into their stories. It's to show us something. So what do you think the author is trying to show us with that memory? What do you think so far? What is the secret that was, quote, like a knife cutting through Brian, cutting into Brian? Brian found something out that he probably should not have found out. Do you think he's going to keep the secret? Can Brian have both good and bad luck at the same time? I think you can. When, when everything's looking up for you, then it's like you start all over again, or vice versa, when everything's just really down and everything is not going your way, there's suddenly a little light, a little hope, a little good luck. And make a connection. Could you be on your own like Brian? I think I said in session one, there is no way I could be on my own like Brian. I would at least need my husband to help me survive the wilderness. And that is true. All right, what has happened in chapter four? Chapter four is a good story. So we do know that there is a secret that Brian is keeping. And right now he could shout it from his, shout it from the rooftops. He's all alone. Nobody would hear a secret. Do you think he does? Do you think when you keep a secret so, so bad, like the one that Brian is keeping, do you think he could just shout it out or talk it out knowing that nobody would hear and that would feel good? I think it would. Get it off your chest even if literally nobody is listening. It is an internal conflict that is eating him up on the inside. So an internal conflict is something that happens inside of you, inside your brain. It's that angel-devil comparison. Should I do this or should I not? A new menace plagued Brian with the rising of the sun. We all know how important sunblock is, don't we? <laughs> Brian starts to plan and rationalize the fact that he needs to save himself. Brian is on his own own and before he starts to lose it mentally he needs to get prepared what do we need to think of in survival right away fire water food shelter right and then of course protection maybe that's how hatchet comes back into play chapter five take a look at these visuals they have something to do with um what we learn in chapter five Brian is feeling the downfalls of the elements. What I mean by that is the elements of nature, the elements of his surroundings, right? Specifically his quench of thirst. As human beings, we cannot last very long without water, right? And it has to be water that we're able to drink. Brian remembers he has a certain tool with him left in his bag by his mom. That hatchet will be vital in Brian's survival. Vital of the utmost importance. Brian is panicking and remembers a lesson from his former English teacher. He applies this lesson to his survival situation. Think of everything he's going to come in contact with. Alone in the wilderness. Predators, prey, elements, cold, heat, water, no water. You have to think, you have to think and you have to be prepared before those scenarios actually hit you head on. In chapter six, Brian chooses the lake location for his shelter, smart, with dangers involved. He's having difficulty adapting to his surroundings and his ability to eat. Think about it. There's going to be this, this theme that keeps coming back. You know, you're hungry in the real world. He goes and opens the refrigerator and gets something to eat. He's thirsty. He turns on the faucet, fills up his cup, and drinks water. There is no refrigerator and there's no faucet in the wilderness. He has an internal conflict over the situation that he has found himself in. He's wondering, will I survive? He puts on a brave face for himself. I'm sure the doubts creep in every morning, every afternoon, and every night. But you have to put on a brave face because you want to survive. 
at the end, he wants to get home. Conflict, there's a great video here on conflict, all types of conflict, specifically internal and external. External conflict, there are many. Internal, it's just one. It's the conflict inside your head and your heart. External, you can have conflict with another character, another person. You can have conflict with nature, a tornado, a hurricane, a blizzard. You can have a conflict with society, right? What internal conflict is Brian facing at this point in the story? We touched upon it a little bit, but go ahead and jot down some notes. What external conflict is Brian facing at this point in the story? And there is no wrong answer for that. If there is a conflict that comes from the story, it's right, whether your answer differs from mine or your peers. And what can he do to help resolve each conflict? No matter the conflict that you're given, there is always something you can do to help in its resolution. No matter how big, no matter how small, you can help in your own conflict. Brian can help. If he's thirsty, he needs to figure out a way to filter the lake water so it's safe to drink. If he's hungry, he needs to get to work to find some food, right? So I'd like you to think and share. What connections have you made in this story so far? Remember the three types of connections you can have. Text to self. I can relate to this because text to text. This reminds me of another book or another movie or another show or a song. And text to world. How does it connect to the world around you? Whether it's your household, your school, your city, the country, or the world in which you live. So think and share some of those. For next time, please read chapters seven, eight, and nine. Take your time. What connections are you coming up with in the text? How are you being an active reader? Are there memories that we're being exposed to in these chapters? Is there an aha moment that we're learning for with this character? We'd like you to pay close attention to how Brian starts a fire. How many of you could be in the wilderness and start a fire? without a match, without a lighter. And fire is crucial in survival. And something to think about, is there ever a time where it is okay to break the law? Interesting question. Is there ever a time where it is okay to break the law, right? Laws are there for a reason. Is it okay to break them and explain? As always, ladies and gentlemen, please reach out if you have questions, concerns, or comments. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, until next time, signing off, and I'll see you for the next session of Hatchet.